I've been on a quest to find the perfect video editing slash jack of all trades computer for me and my research led me away from buying another Windows computer to instead buy the M3 Max MacBook Pro since portability is very important to me. See, my goal is to up my YouTube game. I wanna learn how to add visual effects to my videos to make them more interesting. So with that being the goal, I bought the M3 Max. And after using it for a month, I've decided to return it. Not because it isn't a great computer, it is, but to be fair, my unrealistic expectations for what it or any computer was actually capable of doing made it not worth the price. More on that in a moment. What you need to know about me is I'm the kind of guy I need to try everything on the menu before I'm happy with the choice I've made. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm doing right now with computers. See, the M3 Max makes editing 4K videos a breeze, smoother than I expected. It's really incredible. But what I can't stop thinking about is, is the performance so incredible because of the M3 Max chip? Or is this just how good all Apple Silicon chips are? Because I don't know. I've never used any Apple computers before. If the M3 Max is a 10 out of 10, what would the other M chips be like for me? Maybe I don't need the M3. It was a huge risk switching ecosystems. However, buying the M3 Max new from Apple allowed me to have a return window, which gave me time to really test it out to see if it was everything I wanted it to be. And while I don't quite feel like the M3 Max is everything I wanted it to be, using it for that month was enough for me to get a taste of the Apple experience, and I liked it a lot. Okay, I said I had unrealistic expectations. What did I mean? Well, before I bought the M3 Max, I didn't understand the difference between just editing videos versus adding visual or animated effects on top of the videos I'm editing. Those are two very different things. What I didn't realize was that adding animated visual effects over your video is insanely demanding on your computer, more specifically the GPU. This makes working with visual effects on an M3 Max not as smooth as I expected, because while the CPUs on Apple MacBooks are insane, they don't have dedicated video cards. I was confused at first because my 2020 Windows laptop worked just as well as the M3 Max when it came to using animated effects because it does have a dedicated video card. This made me feel disappointed with the M3 Max because I didn't consider this at all before I bought it. I just thought that it would be so much better. Eventually, I realized that while adding effects was cool and all, straight up video editing is way more important to me and the Windows machine was nowhere near the M3 Max when it comes to that, like not even a contest. And that's what I paid for. Long story long, while I love the M3 Max performance for the video editing smoothness I was seeking, it didn't match my unrealistic expectations of smooth editing and being able to smoothly work with visual effects. Since now I know that option is off the table, I decided to adjust my expectations and see if I could find something with a similar performance for a cheaper price tag. I took a chance and bought myself a used M1 Max on Marketplace. I received it yesterday. So with one day left on the return window, I need to test these things to find out where the heck the line is for my workflow and budget. Will the M3 Max prove it's really on another level when it comes to performance? Or will the M1 Max hold its own and surprise me with how capable it is years later? I honestly don't know what to expect. I haven't used the M1 Max much yet besides just copying everything over, so your guess is as good as mine. One more quick thing before I get into it. The reason I like that Max chips instead of the others is I believe they have double the video encoders than the Pro and base model chips have. This is huge for me since I work on H.265 and H.264 formats with my Sony camera. Okay, before I compare the performance, let me quickly talk about the machines themselves. They feel virtually identical. If I closed my eyes, I couldn't tell them apart. The keyboards feel the same, the speakers, the screens, etc. You can't tell the difference. The screens are brighter on the M3 Max, but honestly, the M1 Max is more than bright enough for me. I used to crank my Windows 1 at 100% all the time on battery, but with either of these Macs, it's always somewhere in the middle, it's just so good. The M1 Max also has the heavy and slippery body, but it feels extremely premium, which I love. I might have to invest in a skin though. Let me know if you know of any good ones. And lastly, since I haven't used this M1 Max yet, I don't want to talk about the battery. I'm skeptical it'll compare to the M3 Max, five nanometer versus three, we'll see. I'll talk about that in a future video. All right, the return window is closing and I'm super curious how good this M1 Max is. Let's get into it. I'm gonna share my screen while using the M3 Max, run some apps, do the same with the M1 Max, then I'll show them side by side. Then at the end, I'll talk about the results. Let's go. 
This is the desktop on the M3, me flipping back and forth between open programs. I've got maps open. It's just kind of how I usually use the computer, you know? It runs the maps very well, browsing some Facebook, doing some video editing. This is my kiddos and me dancing. This is a 4K, 60 FPS, 10 bit, 422 on the M3 Max. The playback is just a treat. You know, every time I hit spacebar, it starts going. It stops when you want it to. Scrubbing is a breeze. This is, yeah, like I said, H.265, so that it has the built-in encoders. It runs it smooth. So here, when I put on an effects, the aperture diffraction, you can see how it goes down to seven frames per second during that clip. Right when it gets to the clip without the VFX, it runs fine, but during you know, the effects on there, it, it, it chugs down a little bit. That's what I was talking about when I say it's not perfect, but that's just, I didn't know that. It does a pretty good job with what it's got. So here's me putting on the digital glitch. You can see again, it slows down. It's not quite smooth performance, but right when it's done, the performance picks back up and it's buttery editing which is what I do, you know, 98% of the time. It's nice to add these effects in. In my last video, I showed a way that you can speed those up. <laughs> Cutie pies. Okay, let's do a magic mask. So I'm just going to select my daughter here, make sure that she, all of her gets selected, and away we go. Now here we go, we're getting around 13 frames per second for magic mask. So it doesn't take very long. It's not lightning fast. I saw Mr. Alex Tech getting, what, 45? And here we go. You can do fun little things with it. Masking is great. Sky's the limit with what you can do. All right, here's me stacking some 4K footage on the timeline. What do I have? I have three stacked here. I'm just gonna resize them, move it around. Like on my old Windows machine, this would just break it. Start to sound like a helicopter. I'm gonna stack some text. Like I do sometimes when I'm comparing videos, I'll put four of them in each corner, put text on them. And look at that, playback is smooth. Got a call out, got a couple layers of text. What a treat, amazing. Fantastic video editing experience. Here you can just see I'm clipping. When I'm usually editing my talking head stuff, I clip and move very quickly like that. And then boom, back and forth. All right, let's try some gaming. Let me just show you what that is like on the M3 Max. This is Path of Exile. You can see in the top here, it's got 60 frames per second. There's a little graph up there and it holds it. Looks great. This is an old build. It's a discharge one. So there's lots of surges and spikes of action on the screen and it seems to be holding steady. Oh, what a great game that was. Holding steady at 60 FPS. Now here I'm just bouncing over to Photoshop. The only way that I really use it is when I'm editing my thumbnails. You know, I'll, I'll have layers of graphics and zooming, zooming in and out, adjusting the colors, shadings and glows and things like that. Nothing too huge. Here's my other game, Hearthstone, which I play. So usually I'll be doing video editing and playing a game, match of Hearthstone. But as you can see, the, the frame rate is buttery smooth. So I'll have a turn usually, and then when it's my opponent's turn and I'm waiting for them to play, I'll, uh, I'll switch over, flip over to either doing some work or doing some social, and then I'll flip back to my game. Having multiple apps open, multiple tabs open, I mean, geez, this thing, of course it's gonna be able to handle it. Well, that's it for the M3 Max. What a great experience that is. Okay, here we are on the M1 Max. So I'm just browsing around on some social here, doing a little Facebook shopping. Usually you've got multiple tabs open. Sometimes I'll be curious and be like, oh, what's, uh, what's over here? All right, here's me in Resolve Studio version. You can see I'm scrubbing around on the 4K 60 timeline. It looks great. Here's me putting the aperture diffraction uh, visual effect on. And look at this one. It goes down to 5.6 frames per second, not the seven frames per second of the M3 Max, but it stutters at the same spot just like any computer would. Uh, but you can see when you do less intense ones, it still runs great. If I wanted to add some light rays onto a clip, it still adds and video edits it like a breeze on, with this M1 Max. Basic text on there can handle it like a champ. Doesn't even break a sweat. Again, this is with the HS, XAVCHS or H.265 codec. Um, so when we put the digital glitch on, similar to the M3 Max, it slows down. It's a little slower on the M1 Max, but once it's done and gets back in, um, it runs it like a champ. 
I'm really happy so far with the performance and the video editing and resolve. Now here is where it gets interesting. The magic mask is down to about nine. What did we get up to on the, the M3 Max? 13 frames per second? So there we go. What's that, about 30% faster with the graphics? Here I'm turning her into a little purple, what <laughs> a goofball. Oh, it's cutie pie. It's just fun to be able to edit that stuff. All right, so let's stack some 4K 60 10-bit footage on the M1 Max and see what happens. Okay, we hit play. So far, so good. Not missing a beat. We'll add some text, a couple layers of text, and maybe a call out one with a little bit of action and smooth. Basically the same as the M3 Max. Like I said, while I'll usually, maybe I'll put four videos side by side if I'm comparing something. I, I don't usually go too much crazier than that. As you can see, splitting, splicing, cutting, ripple effects, how, I'm, how I like to video edit. And when I say smooth video editing, that's what I mean. Um, you can see the ones that have video effects on there slow it down a little bit. Okay, let's go over and check out Path of Exile on the M1 Max. In town here, it looks pretty good. You can see the frame rate, it's hanging around 49. Okay, there we're at 60 frames per second, so it looks good. And then boom, you'll notice on the little graph there, we're at about 40, 40 frames per second. So it, it runs well, but it does not hold the 60 frames per second that the M3 Max does. It's playable, but here, look, we're in the low 30s, 33 to 36 frames per second when the action's going on. Would I want to play like that? No, I, I wouldn't love to. It's not ideal. Is it worth thousands of extra dollars to have a little bit better frame rate in a game that I don't really play anymore? No, no. But uh, it still plays it pretty good. And I, I could probably turn down a few settings. I haven't really, that was just all the default settings in the game. Here with Photoshop, obviously it's, it's exactly the same performance for how I use Photoshop. I only usually have, you know, maybe a couple, one thumbnail and maybe a few other items open at once. Um, with Hearthstone, um, let's open up um, some 4K editing while I'm playing Hearthstone because they both are using the GPU and CPU runs perfectly fine. So while that game is adding, <laughs> loading up, I'll just tinker around, look at Ruby Doobie, and um, yeah, maxed out res for the game. It hits the, the 60 frames per second. It's a nice experience. So, and I'm just bouncing around. I'm just kind of trying to show you how I might be using it while I'm trying to be productive and gaming at the same time. Trying to squeeze it all in at once. That's, that's the way. All right. Now here, I have them side by side. I'm rebooting them right now because I saw a test somebody did and the M3 was like way faster than the M1, so I needed to find out for myself. So I just rebooted them. They're at about 75% battery each because I didn't need to set it at 100%. And there, they loaded up pretty quickly. The M3 was definitely a few seconds faster. So I'm just gonna punch in the password. I did it maybe a second quicker on the M3, so now they're loading uh, from the load screen, or from the welcome screen, and there, boom. Not that big of a difference. I mean, a little bit, for sure. The M3 is definitely faster. So uh, here I'm opening up DaVinci Resolve. It started up on the M1. Um, it looked like it was gonna open up faster, but then it actually got into the main uh, project manager much quicker with the M3. The M3 Max definitely loads programs uh, opens them and boots itself faster. You can see here when I'm editing and sliding, well, doing the scrubbing side by side, I can't really notice a difference, to be honest. Not enough uh, that it makes a difference. Here I've got the digital glitch and it's dipping on both of them. And then you can see on the right, it just it picked up a split second quicker after the, the VFX or the, the animated text there. But when I'm not doing that, they, they virtually feel identical. Okay, as far as opening up web browsing goes, why not? Here's me loading Reddit. Now I'm in the basement. I'm as far away from the router in this house I possibly could be. So that might have something to do with it a little bit. But you, you can see drawing into Facebook there. It's definitely quicker loading up YouTube. It's a little bit quicker for sure. But as far as using the touchpad and, and loading the websites and viewing the websites goes, it's, it's fine. So here's me opening up maps from the spotlight. Again, you just see split second. Everything's a split second faster with the M3 Max. 
like you would kind of expect it to be. What a treat both of them are to use. All right, I didn't have as much time with these two computers as I would have liked, but I think I was able to learn what I wanted to learn. And that is, while the performance of the M3 Max is noticeably better, the M1 Max is still pretty dang good. And when it comes to value per dollar, I think the M1 Max makes a lot more sense for me. After tax, the M3 Max costs $5,934, or almost 6,000 bucks. The M1 Max cost me 3,000, so half the price. You saw exactly how I used the computers. The M3 was slightly faster, but I would rather sacrifice that little bit of speed to have extra money, which I can invest into my channel. Because for the areas that the M3 Max was noticeably faster, gaming, launching apps, adding effects and resolve, I mean, I only use those things sporadically. The overall video editing experience and just using the computer feels very similar unless I compare them side by side. Another thing to keep in mind and what I've been learning is how to work smarter. As I realized, since no computer at this price point can do what I want it to do brute force style, the next best thing is to learn to be more efficient with the software and the files I'm using. And with DaVinci Resolve, you can very easily use things like smart cache, render in place, proxies, etc. You could also convert your footage to ProRes or RAW. There's lots of things you can do to speed up your workflow if your computer isn't a powerhouse. In fact, I'm gonna share what I learned about optimizing my workflow on this channel, so be sure to follow the channel if you wanna learn along with me as I dive deeper into this stuff. So what do you think? Were you surprised by the results? Were you impressed? I'm impressed. I mean, $3,000 is still a crazy amount of money for a laptop that was released in October 2021, but there's a reason Macs retain their value so well. And this computer in particular has Apple Care until December 2024. I don't love paying for Apple Care, but I get it. I mean, it's tough downgrading from the M3 to the M1. It sucks. I don't want to. The M3 Max is quite the machine. It's amazing. So if you have one or you're buying one, you'll love it. I loved it. I just can't quite afford it at the moment, but I'm happy enough with the M1 Max. I think I can finally relax, at least for a little while. Plus, I still have Android everything else though, since I can't quite afford to upgrade that stuff yet. I'd really love to try out all things Apple, see what the straight up fanboy life is like, because if the rest of the Apple products are anything like the quality of these MacBooks, well, I can't wait to try them. Hey, when the refund goes through for this M3, maybe I will be able to afford a bunch of the other stuff. Hey wife, I'm gonna buy you flowers. To my window friends out there, you haven't lost me. It's more like I learned to speak another language and I'm just excited to speak that language as my main for now, you know? You can't replace what window computers offer. Value, horsepower, gaming. I miss my Windows keyboard shortcuts so bad, among other things, but Apple stuff is just great for what I'm doing right now. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you as always for watching and supporting the channel by thumbing up the videos, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't already. If you missed my M3 Max review video, check that out here. Otherwise, maybe check out this video next. We'll see you next time on the Sad Studio. Dad!